We learned about the basics of Node.js in great detail. Now it's time to dive really deeper into how Node.js actually works behind the scenes. So in the next few lectures, we are going to learn about the working of Node.js and how does Node.js handles events and asynchronous code and what are the tool Node.js framework provides to make it suitable for backend development. And the kind of knowledge you are going to get from these lectures will really help you understand Node.js concepts better. So without wasting any time, in this lecture, let's understand the architecture of Node.js. Here, I'm going to represent the architecture of Node.js in terms of node dependencies. Node dependencies are basically some libraries on which Node.js depends on in order to work properly. Now, we learned that Node.js is a JavaScript runtime and this runtime has several dependencies on which it depends on to work properly. And the most important dependencies are the V8 JavaScript engine and libuv. We have already learned that Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Google's V8 JavaScript engine. V8 engine in Node.js is responsible for executing the JavaScript code which we write to create the backend application. And that's why V8 is a dependency for Node.js. If it wasn't for V8 engine, Node would have absolutely no way of understanding and executing the JavaScript code that we write for developing the Node applications. And therefore, V8 is a fundamental part of Node architecture. V8 engine is responsible for converting JavaScript code into machine code that a computer can actually understand and execute. Now, V8 engine alone is not enough to create a whole server-side framework like Node.js and that's why we also have libuv in Node. LibUV is an open source library with a strong focus on dealing with asynchronous input output. If you have worked with JavaScript in browser, then you already know that when we use JavaScript in browser, it does not allow us to access underlying client's operating system or file and folders. There, we cannot use JavaScript to read or write file from the client's machine because of security reasons. But we have that capability with JavaScript when we use it in Node.js and this capability is provided by libuv. Libuv gives Node access to underlying computer's operating system, file system, networking and many more things. And that's why it's another important dependency of Node.js runtime. Besides that, libuv also implements two extremely important features of Node.js and these are event loop and thread pool. Event loop in Node.js is responsible for executing easy tasks like executing callback functions and network IOs. On the other hand, thread pool is used to process heavy tasks like file access or compression or anything like that. One important thing to note here is that libuv is actually completely written in C++ and not in JavaScript. Also, V8 engine is also written in C++ language along with JavaScript. So it will not be wrong to say that Node.js is a program written in C++ and JavaScript and not just in JavaScript. But the important point to note here is that Node.js ties all these libraries together no matter if it is written in C++ or JavaScript and then it gives us developers access to their functions in pure JavaScript. So this architecture allows us to write 100% pure JavaScript code running in Node.js and still gives us access to functions like file reading which is actually written in C++ language behind the scenes. And speaking of other libraries, Node actually does not rely only on V8 engine and libuv as its dependencies. It also has other dependencies like HTTP parser for passing the HTTP, CAS for some DNS request stuff, OpenSSL for cryptography and Zlib for compression. And these are not that important to understand for now. So in the end, when we have all these dependencies nicely fit together, we end up with Node.js runtime ready to be used on the server side for our application. And this is a very high level overview of Node.js architecture. Now, let's understand the working of this architecture in more detail. And before that, let's first try to understand what a process, thread and thread pool is. A process is what facilitates the execution of a program. In simple words, a process is just a program which is currently executing. For example, when we open up a program in our computer, let's say when we open up a calculator app on our computer, a process called calc.exe will be created for that calculator program to facilitate its execution. And you can see this process in the task manager after the program has been opened. Now, we already learned that Node.js is basically a C++ program. 
So when we run Node.js application, a process is created which facilitates the execution of that Node.js program. That means when we run a Node.js application on a computer, a Node process will be opened for that Node application which will run on that computer. And we can actually access this process from our Node application using a process variable and we are going to use it later in this course. Every process has by default a single main thread which is responsible for executing the program code in the process. Okay, so remember that a thread in a process is responsible for executing the program code. In some programming languages like Java or C Sharp, we can write code to create multiple threads in a process. But by default, a process has a single thread. But in Node.js, we don't have that option to create multiple threads programmatically. So Node.js programs are executed inside one single thread, the main single thread which a process gets. Now, it's not important to deeply understand what a thread or a process is, that is more about computer science, but just keep in mind that a thread is where the code of a program gets executed. But what is important to understand here is that the Node.js application code is executed in just one single thread, which makes it easy to block Node applications. And this is something which we already talked about before. And this is really important to understand. So let's now quickly understand what exactly happens in the single thread when we start our Node application. So here we have a simple Node program. Now when we run this Node.js program, all the modules that our Node application needs that will be required and imported and that will happen in the main thread. So this code, this required statement will be executed in the main thread. Then also all the top level codes, that means the code which is not inside any callback function will be executed and it will also get executed in the main thread. So in this program, this console.log statement, this is the top level code, this some task function, this is also the top level code. So these codes will be executed in the main thread. Now all other codes which runs asynchronously like file system functions, they are not executed in the main thread. They are executed in the background and that background here is the thread pool. So the functions like this read file which runs asynchronously or this create server which also runs asynchronously, these functions will not get executed in the main thread. They will be executed in the thread pool. And with these functions, we also have a callback function, right? So to this read file function, we are also passing a callback function which will be called when the job of this read file function is finished. So let's say when this read file function is executed in the thread pool, it is reading this input.txt file. Once its job is complete, once it has completely read the data from this input.txt file, its job will be complete and the callback function attached to this read file function that will be pushed to the event loop. And in the event loop, this callback function will wait for its execution. The callback function here will not get executed immediately. The callback functions which waits inside the event loop that gets executed when the main thread is empty. That means when all the top level code has already executed. In the same way, this create server function is also going to run asynchronously. So that will be also pushed to the thread pool where it will do its job. And once its job is complete, the callback function registered with this create server function that will also get pushed to the event loop. And there, that callback function will wait for its execution. Okay, keep in mind that when the execution of all the top level code is complete, then only the execution of the callback function sitting in the callback queue or sitting in the event loop, it will start. So basically, once the execution of top level code is complete, the event loop finally starts and event loop simply pushes callback functions from callback queue to the main thread where those callback function gets executed. So for now, you need to know that the event loop is where most of the work is done in your node application. We can say that event loop is really the heart of the entire node architecture. But there are some tasks which are really too heavy and time consuming. And just now we learned that the callback functions which waits inside the callback queue, it also gets executed in the main single thread. So if the callback function is going to perform some heavy task like file reading or writing, it can block the main thread. If you see 
the callback function which we are passing to this create server method inside this callback function we are trying to read a file using this read file method so this task here it might take some time it is a heavy task so if that callback function is going to perform some heavy task in that case that task will not get executed in the main thread that task will again will be passed over to the thread pool where it will do its job and that heavy task will be executed in the thread pool in some other thread and not in the main thread so keep in mind that all the heavy tasks which cannot be handled by the event loop it is offloaded to the thread pool which can then execute it asynchronously without blocking the main thread okay so event loop basically performs simple tasks and it offloads heavy tasks to the thread pool in node.js by default we get four additional threads in the thread pool which are completely separate from the main single thread and we can actually configure it up to 1024 threads but usually these four are enough and these threads together form a thread pool and all this happens automatically behind the scenes we as a developer cannot decide what code will be executed in the thread pool and which code will not get executed in the thread pool that's all happens behind the scenes automatically now the expensive tasks which can get offloaded to the thread pool are those operations like dealing with the files everything related to cryptography like hashing password then all the compression related tasks and also dns lookups which basically matches web domains to their corresponding real ip address so these are the things that would most commonly block the main thread and so node takes care of automatically offloading these heavy tasks to the thread pool where they don't block the main single thread and this is how node.js works behind the scenes and we learned that the heart of node.js architecture is actually the event loop event loop does most of the work in node.js so in the next lecture let's understand how the event loop works in node.js this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day